It's time for another edition of Mace in Your Face. Now, along with college football immortality, Glenn Mason, here's Dan Barrero. I'm very surprised, Glenn Mason, that somewhere along the way, becoming the now that you've become kind of a world traveler. That you have not accompanied Louie on one of his yearly Hawaiian excursions. He's in the Big Island right now. I'm not a family member. I. You got to be pretty, in the family. Yeah, I'm not, and I'm not Italian. <laughs> That's true. What are you, by the way? Mostly Irish. Irish. Okay. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. Guards, you talking for? They have exit rows in the back of the plane. I that's, didn't know that. Yeah, that's what he says. I'm, really? not, I'm unfamiliar. And I think you have to be, a kid can't be in those rows, right? Correct. Because you got to be old enough. But yeah, it's an exit row. You wouldn't know about that, you would you? No. Yeah, you know when you said you were surprised? Yeah. I thought you were going to say you're surprised that I didn't walk in and poke you right in the nose. What did I do? Because I've had more people. I'm traveling. People are calling me and saying, your buddy, Cheap shots. Dan, Taking cheap shots. Damn it! They weren't while supposed you're to travel. They weren't supposed to tell you. Just, just like the uh, oh, I heard so many people telling you, oh, we forgot Damn all it. about the Northwestern Hail Mary. Oh, you yeah. know, well, you know, that was timely. I, I, well, I know, but I think, do you ever the, the, talk about the good the games that I, you know, occasionally, but not know? often? You talk about, about Ohio State two thousand a lot. What, what, we no, do. How about when against in ninety uh, nine Penn State against Penn State when we threw. Two Hail Marys in the last drive. You did? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, they, I know you they, wouldn't remember because we won. And they worked? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember those. Yeah. Did you practice for them or was it just pure luck? Well, we had them, but I, I just lost my pension. First down, we threw it. Yeah. Ron Johnson caught it midfield, and then we threw a Hail Jane, which you don't know what that means. I have no clue. Hail Jane for us, we have three guys on one side and two guys go deep, and the inside guy breaks out. Okay. And it tipped, and Arlen Bruce caught it. Oh, yeah. Then I played for the field goal. And Dan I, uh, Dan Nystrom hit it, huh? and we, you would never bring that. No, up. it's not as interesting. It's not because no, I mean, no. yeah. the, the Northwestern hail. Well, the, it came up because, of course, the Bears just had the gave up the easiest hail mary in the history of hail marys. I think you'll agree that was well. Like, the one guy absurd. was over cheering in the stands, <laughs> yes, and he was. Are you? Hey, you know what though? I, I'm sitting there with uh, what's his name? Uh, you know, Garzy. Garzy. Yeah. And you know you shouldn't use big words that you don't understand, like class. About the guy wow. robbing the ball, you know. I mean, really. I mean, come on. Are we talking about Dan? I said Barrero? Jack Assey. That's what I said. I thought you said yeah. no class. Yeah, well, no class. Hey, also, before, before well, I... you tell me what should happen. I mean, that's ridiculous. You don't steal. Try to steal the the, the fielder's glove. Well, it's, well, you're a New Yorker you know, though, so you might no, agree I with mean, that. Or a Jersey? No, no, don't, don't. You know, you like to throw everybody yeah, in, in that the same pot. pot. It's, it's, it's. Very the different. majority, of, probably the guys around said, what did that guy just do? You know? And uh, and they threw him out, and it was an out. Let me ask you, before I forget, though, because, yeah. you know, I'd like to, I always talk about my you, good friend Gary Holman, yeah, you know, you the do. Cavalero. Right. Well, anyway, he's down in Florida, and it's his girlfriend's birthday. Oh, we're happy Pam. for him. Yeah. Yeah, and she's a lovely, late, way too nice. Was she, like, 26? A little older than okay. that. Okay. Just right. a little bit. Right. But Sorry. she's My very bad. nice. It's her, I'd sing happy birthday, but everybody would turn the radio off. Yeah. So, are you glad to well, see Well, I thought me? you had something else. Is that it? Oh, I, I got a lot of backstory. No, let me tell you. Let me tell you this. Go ahead. A couple of weeks ago, we were talking. I, You know, I sit down and why is it I talk to everybody? Yeah. And there was a guy walking down the street. You remember this story. And he had a Michigan shirt mm -hmm. on. And, I, you know, for years, I didn't see anybody with a Michigan shirt. Now they won the national championship last year in the Michigan shirts every place. So I said, go blue. And the guy walked over, and we started talking. He's not from here. He lives in Tampa, but he listens to K-Fan all the time. So he reached out because he on my show, was away. he said, hey, I hear you talking on your road trip that you're probably going to be going through Tampa. If, if you are, oh yeah, uh, why don't you stop on the way home? And I'll buy you dinner. This guy's the retired CEO of Bloomin Brands, which is uh, Fleming Steakhouses, which is world class. So he could buy the twins if he wanted to. It was probably could. Yeah. And uh, Outback Steakhouses and yeah. some other things. So anyway, I called him and I did. So I, I Saturday I drove up there and went to Fleming's restaurant right by uh, Raymond James Stadium. Oh yeah, great spot, great restaurant. Guy went above and beyond. He and, took he brought, care, yeah. and he brought three guys with him, and he told me he was going to do that, that work in the company. Any that women? Are, 
football fans know. <sighs> and he's not that good a guy. <laughs> and and uh, he brought the three guys with their football fans. Mm-hmm. And there was an, uh, uh, another Michigan guy and a Michigan State guy. And there's another guy. Any that, Indiana so, so guys? You, no. Yeah. As soon as you sat down, you knew this guy was really sharp, really smart. You know, a cut above. I knew he had to be well educated. He went to Harvard, Harvard oh. in the Midwest. That is the Ohio State University. Of course, yeah. But we we had a great dinner. But you talk about a small world. The general manager of that restaurant uh, went to Texas A and I. Who else went to Texas A and I? Johnny Randall. John Randall. Yeah. I asked him. Absolutely. And this guy knows John Randall, and he played pro football for the Bucks and the Cowboys. Great guy. Mm. Absolutely great guy. And uh, so anyway, um, David Denno, who's the, the the guy, he says, "How the big cave? How can we get Dan Barrero and Garcia down said, in I Tampa?" Yeah, I said, "I don't know about Barrero, but if you say free meal, my man will be down there in a second. <laughs> and, uh, wow. in your I, face. I, he said, well, "We could Some do the show for. right from the restaurant the whole day." Oh, yeah. I said, "You know what?" I said, "Sometime if the Vikings are playing there down against yeah. the Buccaneers, that's it." It could probably Road trip. happen. Then it could happen. Road trip. What What was your meal? What'd you have? Oh, started. Well, first of all, we had some adult S- several cocktails. courses. Yeah, I had a martini. Okay. Oh, was that rare for you? Uh, no. Oh, okay, no. You're a big martini. When I, when I don't have to drive, I had a, a martini. Yeah. They had some Manhattans, and I think uh, uh, David had twelve year old McClellan. Uh, how you say it? Scotch. Yeah. Five dollars. Right. Then he ordered this big tower of seafood. Oh, one of those seafood oh, towers. Oh. And then he tried to get me to order the uh, uh, bone-in cowboy. It was 20 ounces. I said, I can't eat that. <laughs> so I ordered a bone-in ribeye, and okay. then everybody else had that. With all the sides and dessert, after dinner drinks, it was great. Absolutely, I'm telling you, I, I don't know when I've had a better dinner than that. Well, I hope you at least tipped your server. No. Since you got the meal for free. Yeah. I, I entertained the oh whole my night. God. I tell in story. Oh. How about this, though? So, you know, I, every morning I go out to the dog park. Yeah, right? With, sure. And I got my peeps. Already since you came back, you Yeah, I've in. been there. Yeah. And they were texting me from time to time saying, we miss you, we miss you, we miss you, you know. So yesterday I show up, and they're all real happy to see me. And uh, one of the women there, Carol, she says, you know, it's a great idea. We're so glad that you're back. Why don't you throw me? Why don't you throw a welcome home party? Are you me not? throw it. They're glad to see me, and they want me to yeah, throw a party for them. That doesn't make any sense. They should throw it for you. I know, but you know what? I'm a sucker. Well, that's what. It, so, did you do it? Not yet. You're but going I'm, to. I'm probably going to do it. So you're yeah. going to host your own welcome home party. Yeah. That's unprecedented. I, it's but unbelievable. You know what it That's me. I we won't be invited to that either. We won't be. We, every, won't, we won't know anything about it until the photo's after the fact. Everybody takes advantage of poor old man. Yeah. No, you know what it is? You love it because you're deep down, you, you, you're you a social butterfly. Yeah. I, you know, I do. I um, I got to tell you this other story. I'm going to get off my bandwagon. But I com- kind of complained to Gary Holman. I said, it's amazing. You know, Ohio State people, it's kind of not every place you go, O-H! And then they yell back, I-O, yeah, you know? Yeah, It's obnoxious. So, so every once in a while, I'll get on an airplane, you know, someplace, and someone recognized for every and some guy in the middle of nowhere, mm. sitting back where guards he normally sits, he'll yell, O-H! And I I don't yell back, you know? And it, Why not? It, because I don't. Oh. And people kind of look, at, they don't know what he's doing, but he's looking at me like, what is wrong with you? So I'm down in uh, my place in Florida, and they got a new, beautiful Lifetime Fitness. Uh, that, that I've been oh, doing. yeah. They really do. So I, I go over there one day, and there's a guy. Walking through. He's, on the, he's on the treadmill, or what do you call that? You know, yeah, he, he's going, he's right. going, and, all, and it's packed. And all of a sudden, he thinks he recognizes me, and he's, he screams out, OH! You know, it scares the hell out of everybody. They're all looking at me. I don't say you anything. Do it. So finally, he comes over and says, hey, you look like Glenn Mason. I said, no, I am. He said, well, why didn't you, why didn't you, I owe, you know, I said, well, you know. Give the people what they want. So anyway, Ace. so now I drive my first day on the trip back. I leave Tampa and I drive to Blytheville, Arkansas. And as I park the car and I'm getting out of the car with my dog, here's a family. They pull in. I see the Ohio license plate. Okay. So there's wife, three kids, <laughs> guys got the bags and all that kind of stuff. I mean, he's really loaded down. He's walking in, so I couldn't resist. 
I go, oh, H, <laughs> and I'll be a son of a gun. He dropped everything, everything in the park lot. There you go. I, oh, you did I it. said, you know what? You got it, into it, the spirit of it, huh? I guess so. I don't know. What happened on that Hail Mary uh, play against Northwestern? That's so long ago. They scored. Zach, that? It was Zach Kustak. That's they scored. They scored, and it came up because of the the uh, what happened to the Bears. You know what? When I saw the video, I watched the video again, just out of curiosity. That play, the the the, the Hail Mary play against that you where you lost to Northwestern. Well, I, I count. Yeah. So the it, I don't the, remember. I can't the, well, here's what was unique about it. First of all, you were up 35-14 second half. They've tied at 35-35. Now they're doing the Hail Mary to to Was there overtime then or not? Or was it was just a tie game. I don't this remember. was in 2000. Overtime started in 96, I was told. Okay, so there was overtime. But then they have one last play near midfield, and what they did was it looked like it was planned like he they had a receiver almost near out of bounds who then purposely tipped it back towards the end zone to one of their receivers who caught it just as he crossed the goal line. You don't remember it? And then the next thing they show is your face on TV. You did not. You were like. Did I look like you Well, you looked be, like, yeah, you, exactly. You, you gotta, looked like you got to be kidding me. you got to be kidding me. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. much it. I've had a lot of those moments <laughs> in my career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, you, you live. You, you coached nothing, a long time. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah, that's, right? That's the way you have to look at it. That's why you play the game. That is yeah. part of why the, you, you play the game. Yeah. Uh, let's do this. Let's get a, a pause in, and then I want to. Well, we're going to try to put a grand in somebody's hand, and we got a lot more ground to cover with Mace. The fan and two men and a junk truck want you to enter our national cash contest. The keyword for the 4 o'clock hour is bank. Go to kfan.com and enter the keyword bank. Yo, wow. Sports in the hilarious star of Reno 911 and Grandma's Boy is bringing his side splitting stand up to the State Theater. It's on January 10th. Don't miss your chance to hear his outrageous stories and unforgettable jokes live, and tickets are on sale now. Campaign.com keyword calendar to learn more. Free as a gypsy win. All right, we are back. Glenn Mason in my face, back in studio. If you have questions, hit the Bradshaw and Brian Cafe and text line. That is 646. Eight six. Um, here's an interesting question. I don't know how you'll take this, Mace. Is Mace in your face literally Tommy Olson in 40 years? We need to get these two on a show together. That would be an absolute riot. 40 years? Yeah. He's <laughs> 40 years. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I yeah. understand yeah. that. Yeah. I'm... I'm just saying it's not yeah. a bad not a bad thought. I'll say this, Tommy Olson would be lucky to have aged as gracefully and as well as Glenn Mason. Wow. Thank that's you. That's quite a compliment that's to set out. Nice com that's the first compliment. And you're I gonna got. forget it very quickly oh. when you turn back and rip them. Yeah. You're gonna forget. No, no it's you're, you're, I call I call it like I said. Ooh. Yeah. I must you know what I I must have good genes or something. I you think know, really. yeah, it helps. Yeah. It definitely helps. There's no and, question. You know, I, I've uh, been a pretty clean liver. You have? I really I'm you know and uh the, the smartest thing I ever did was, um, which isn't many things I've done. When I when I was in graduate school, um, they had. Uh, where I had were a, you in graduate school? Where? When and where? Yeah, Ball State. I don't remember that. Well, I was, and I had a I had an exercise physiology course. Okay. okay. Yeah. And at Ball State back then, they were on the cutting edge on adult fitness. They okay. had an exercise exercise physiology, so. Everybody, all the faculty be running around at noontime. It was crazy. But anyway, this guy, I forget his name, the professor, he says, here's the deal. At the end of the course, you can either take the final for a grade or you can take the 12-minute run for a grade. Really? And, no, I'm, I'm serious. And he said, you know, back then, 12-minute run, if you could run two miles, it was like personal, oh, perfect fitness. Yeah. Okay? You get an A. And then it, and then it was... Uh, you know, if you ran seven laps, you right. got a B someplace in before. Which did you choose? Which option did you go with? Oh, I went. With, I went for the twelve minute run. Did you get? To, did you? Did you finish it in twelve? No. Oh no! I, you didn't have to. I finished the twelve minute run. I didn't get full two miles. Full two miles. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. I, got, you, got, I you, got, got an A minus out of the course. I'm like this. So I said, I'm going to start. Sounds like great inflation. Which was good though, because. Um, you know, back then a lot of guys that I played with and stuff, you got done playing, you saw them a couple. A couple years later, they gained 30, 40 pounds. Well, I went the other way. You I went lost the other way. way. See? I, I, was, I was studying for that so, running test every day. Did you finish your grad degree? Did, did you yeah. get your master's? Yeah. 
I don't. Sure. When was that? What year like, are you talking about? Seventy-two or three. I guess. So you're not coaching at that point. Well, back no, I'm I'm a graduate assistant. Okay. And the reason I did it, if you can believe that or not, back then to coach in college, most colleges required a master's degree. Oh. So okay. So yeah. Dave McLean, who had been my oh, position coach, yeah, right, went on to Wisconsin, died there. He convinced me to go over there to get my master's degree just in case I ever wanted to. Oh. Coaching college, and once I got over, I think I'm going to give it a try. But it was, you know, it's hard to get a job. You know, now these guys get jobs like you can't believe. Back yeah. then, to get any type of job, because you only had eight coaches there, sure. there was no analysts, and they didn't have the internet and stuff. So you know what I used to do, Dan? Mm. Every day, I would go over to the library where they had all the newspapers and read the transix, trans transactions, uh, transactions. Mm-hmm. You know, who got what job, right? And and then make calls. One day, I went and read the transaction. There was a guy by the name Dave Kelly, and I saw he got hired at Yale. So I called um, Yale up, and I said, hey, you know, Dave Kelly, I don't want to talk to him, but where did he come from? And they said he came from Allegheny College. So I called Allegheny College, ah. and there was a co- coach there by the name of Sam Timer. Mm-hmm. And uh talked to him, and he goes, you know what? He used to be a Duke. I got recruited by Duke. And he kind of, yeah, kind of remembered me. And he said, geez, you know, I'd like to talk to you. He said, but I'm pretty sure I know who I'm going to hire. And so we talked a little bit. And I said, well, let me ask you something. Just for the experience, if I drive over there at my own expense, would you interview me just for the experience? He said, sure. So I left Ball State. I drove to Meadville. I don't know how many hours. It must be a 70 Yeah, hours that's got to be a like decent that. hike. And met him, and we and we had a little interview, and he said, hey, do you have time for dinner? I go, hell yeah, I got time for dinner, as long as you're buying. And so I had dinner, and then I got back. Even and, then, you were getting free dinners. It's I, unbelievable. I like how I'm the free food guy. I know. He's discussed yeah. two I, free I, meals He today. did it like eight decades I, ago. I got back in the car. I drove home, and before I left, he said, you know, I really enjoyed this. I, I wish we would have gotten involved in sooner. I said, whatever. Well, he called me like two days later and said, I, I changed my, I'm going to hire you. No kidding. So I got hired as uh, assistant football Uh Physical education teacher, uh, and there was only two full time guys, Sam and me. We, we had other guys that would work and coach, yeah. like the guy that ran the gas station and the mailman, and they'd show up for practice. Uh, and then I got a real break. I was there a while, and the AD called me in and said, "I'm going to give you a five hundred dollar raise." I was only making sixty five hundred dollars. He said, and I bartend at night. I made more bartending than I did. He said, "I, I I'm going to give you a five hundred dollar raise." I said, well, "That's great." He says. You're now the tennis coach too. That was the that was the that's tennis right. thing. Yeah, that's it. Because the guy began. got sick, so I became the tennis coach, and uh, rest is history. Well, it, that's such a, a a good story of the times because again, the kids you're going, what you're talking about, I was familiar with, where you actually open a newspaper and there was this little transaction section, stuff that is so foreign to today. Think about it. That's how you got that information that led you to make the phone call you did. That ultimately opened the door and changed your life, right? Exactly. A, a transactions item mm-hmm. in a in a daily newspaper. Exactly. What was your buyout as tennis coach if they <laughs> wanted to fire you? <laughs> By the way, Ball State, man, was a big time party school. Were you partying a lot when you were doing grad work? No. no. No, you gotta tell you, as a graduate assistant, and Dave McClain was a great guy, but he did it was you had uh two gra- he had two graduate assistants. But you only, I think we only had they had six full time assistants. So he did he took the pay and cut it in half, and we had four. Oh, okay. Okay? So you really didn't make much money. But so you had to go to school, and you had to go at night because you had to be there, you know, during the day. And when those guys went recruiting, you had to teach their phys ed classes. Really? Yeah. I mean, so you, you were going nonstop. It was a really good experience. 6500 a year. At that well, point. no. At Ball State, I made 8200 8,200. 65. Oh, 65 at Allegheny. Yeah. And then, okay. I'll tell you how smart I was. I went to Iowa State. Yeah. And, what if you had taken, what if, how different would your life have been if you had, you mentioned Duke was interested in you. What if you'd gone to Duke instead of Ohio State? How different? I probably would have played more. That's what I'm wondering. Might yeah. you have played more? And maybe, oh, there's no doubt. And yeah. being connected yeah. as a Dukey, who knows well, where you might have ended well, up. You know, the, the big thing is I got recruited by Yale. Can you believe that? Yale? And my sister kept saying, you need to go to Yale. Ivy League? I didn't know what Ivy League was, you know. <laughs> and uh, But anyway, I took a recruiting trip to, to Yale, as I remember, okay? And uh, 
you know, hey, I, my dad drove a truck, and you know, we were blue collar, blue family. collar, yeah. And I mean, I was a blue jean and t-shirt guy, so I went up there for recruiting, but really nice. But the first night, you know, they take out and entertain you. They took it to a fraternity party, Ooh. okay? Oh. And the, it was just nice. But the president of the fraternity met us at the front door. I can still see it. He was standing there. He had gray slacks on. He had the blue sport jacket with the patches on the sleeves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he had a shirt with a bow tie, and he was smoking a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, you know, I don't think You're I'll fit, fit in here. No. no. A little intimidating. Yeah, it was a little stuffy. You make you make at that eight, when you're 17, yeah. 18, you're, you don't you don't make no. the smart decisions. No. You make impulsive decisions. No, that's almost sounds like out of Animal House. Yeah. Actually, a fraternities at uh, in this the, was in no the Animal House. House. Believe me, it wasn't quite that no. out of control. It was this Animal was... House. I probably would have gone there. <laughs> you would have been more interested in going. Uh, let's make this the bottom of the hour pause. We're going to mix in some college football when we come back. How about that? Can we do that as well? A little yeah, college I got football? a couple things. Oh, good, yeah. excellent. Mace in your face. Half hour to go. Kessler after the uh, top five at five and some other stuff. Time now for the Vikings report on the fan presented by Miller Lite. Viking safety Cam Bynum joins Barrero next after this from Miller Lite. Bell Bank is giving one KFAN listener each week $1,000 to pay it forward to a charity of their choice. Just go to KFAN.com keyword contest to learn more and enter today. Glenn Mason's in studio. Are you going to tell the poster story? Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. A Ball State poster story. We're, we're, this is worth your time, boys and girls. Well, you know, I, I've got a wide, varied career. And yes. Talking, and you said, oh, I know Ball State. And I said, yeah. I said, you know, I... When I was at Ball State, I came up with a great idea. At least I thought it was a great idea. Because you brought up uh, David Letterman, mm -hmm. who's a Ball State graduate. Well, back in those days, when you went spring recruiting, you used to take posters with you for your school. You know, and you'd go in and give it to the coach. And if there was a good poster, they'd put it up on the wall. You know, and some they'd put up, some they wouldn't. Well, the best poster out there for a while was from the University of New Mexico. And I saw it every weight room I went. And what it had was it had a picture of the stadium with a good-looking co-ed, with a football jersey on, and it, it said, caption, um, wouldn't you like to be a Lobo? You know, it's catchy. Yeah, for so sure. I, I started thinking, and, and I said, Ball State, and they, you know, and I said, gee, I, I got a great idea. It'll end up the David Letterman show. So I, I kind of copied the idea, and I went to the design department, and they made it up for me, and they had a poster of the stadium with a good-looking co-ed, with a jersey, with the schedule, and the caption was, come with me to ball you. And I thought it was ingenious. I said, I know it'll end up in every weight room. I know it'll end up in a David Letterman show. I got as far as the AD's office and he about, he about fired you, me. Yeah. I thought it was ingenious. You know what? I too. You know what? I guarantee you, if the coach at Ball State University is listening to this show, he'll probably come up with that poster now because it's a different day and age. And it might change their whole... Uh yeah. Their whole deal. Their whole recruiting might be um, changed overnight. Yeah. Come with he, me to ball. AD you. guy didn't quite buy it, huh? No. He, That's unfortunate. He thought it was a joke. And, yeah. Uh, and, 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 and you I, meant it. I was dead serious. Yeah. Uh, do we have any college football we can talk about? Yeah. Because I, 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 I know you've got a couple, got a couple things, things stuck things in your really crawl. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Officiating. And we talked, I think, about what happened in the Georgia Texas game, you know, on the pass interference. And the guy and everybody throwing the bottles out there yes. and all that stuff. And after I don't know a couple of minutes, they changed the decision, and it's not a reviewable call. And I thought that was that was that, that bad precedent. Okay. Well, last week, um, there, Ohio State's playing, and they're playing Nebraska, and there's a targeting call, of which Ryan Day goes crazy on the sideline. Running out on the field, actually, really, the thing I said looked like he bumped the official. Yeah, and uh, they uphold. Uh, tar and here come the water bottles. They got to <laughs> stop the game and all that stuff. And it goes to review. They got guys up there who I don't know. They pay good money and they got all the film. And they still say it's targeting. Well, so, so the guy loses. He, he can't play the first half of this week's Penn State game. Well. The Big Ten Conference then reviewed it, and they said, ah, it wasn't targeting, so he doesn't have to sit out this week. Now, wait a minute. 
I mean, I, I guess you say, well, you finally got, well, what's those guys doing up? What's the point? You know, yeah. you, it's one thing if you're on the field and right, you're official. Right. Yeah. The heat of the, but those guys are up there. How can that happen? But the other thing that comes out uh, was the Big Ten office admitted that um, they made the mistake on a spot that they didn't give Nebraska early in the game for Ooh, a first down. I missed that one. And uh, they end up had to settle for a field goal rather than touchdown. They lost a close game. Well, when you watch the film, Dan, the guy makes it by a good yard and a half. Oof. I mean, he stand, it's, he's standing up before he gets tackled. And you think, how can that be? How, That's you know, bad. How, I mean, but, but it's one thing to come out and say, um, there used to be guy, and I'm. I got to be careful. I'm not making any accusation. There for years, you'd hear people, maybe not coach, say officials are on the take. They couldn't have made that call. You know, they know what the score is. They know what's going on. They're doing it. When you see this one, the only thing I could say is either that official, the group, or whoever saw that there, was either on the take or totally incompetent. And either way, they should have coached or officiated yeah. their last game. I really believe that. Well, I'll tell you something, uh, it was, and this is going to, you won't remember this next week because just like you won't remember the compliment guards he sent your way earlier in the yes, show. Yes, I do. He said I look a lot younger than. <laughs> well, yeah. No, he hopes that the Olsen kid ages as good as, as, as gracefully as you have. Yeah. I, I, Thank you. I'm making, and I'm not paid to say this, a Big Ten Network observation. When it comes to game day analysis, whether it's in the studio or whether it's especially during the game, they so badly miss people like you, it's not even funny. I, I really think, and I know a lot of it is probably saving money and it's difficult to find, whatever the case may be, but I, I, I think that they are at an all-time low when it comes to analysis. I do. I, I, I think, and I know you had a good run with them, and you're not complaining or anything like that, but I think that there's a clear, there have been a series of swings and misses about who has been sort of ushered in and who has been one way or another subtly, you know, given the door. It, it, I, don't, I don't think it's very good at all. I'll give you the, the, the best example was the Minnesota game, okay? Who did the Gophers just play? Maryland. Maryland, okay. Well, you know this year, what's the big change? They're throwing a lot more. Mm -hmm. And the QB just had his best game. He's throwing really well. But during the broadcast, it was still like, well, you know you know, you know, know what the Gophers want to do. I mean, there's almost like they were surprised they were throwing that well. Well, this year, out of necessity to a certain extent. Because they can't run it. Because they can't run it. They're throwing a lot. But that tells me that the folks who are preparing for these games – they're just listening to old narratives rather than, well, study what's going on. The whole point of this season for the Gophers has been the not-so-subtle transformation from a running team to a passing team. And it's like, what What are you watching? Nope, go, you know what the Gophers want to do? They want to run the ball. They may want to run it, but they're not running it this year. They are throwing it. So they miss you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to well, uh, thank give you. you a compliment. I, I, yeah. I, I, I appreciate that. And, uh you know, I, when I, uh, and I hear people say this, but I watch, I, things have changed. When I first got in that business and I had no background, because right. I always used to be on the other side of it. And I remember a guy who said, you know, you're doing TV, so you don't have to talk nonstop. It's not like radio. And now when I watch, there's some guys talk the whole time. Yeah, great point. And it's like, you know, you want to say, shut up. This play, play is yeah. not worth analyzing. No. There's some plays not worth analyzing. They just happen, right? Yeah. And, That's a great point. That's true. Uh, and then the other problem I have is some of these guys, um, they talk like they know everything. <laughs> you know, they might have been out of college two years, you know, whatever, never coached, whatever, played one position, and they talk like they know everything. And the problem is the majority of people listening, they think they know everything, and and they don't. Uh, we have a texter who's got a gopher question for you. This is Adam in White Bear Lake. Can you ask Mace his thoughts on Parrish? If he stays with the Gophers, does he have a chance to be the best safety to come out of Minnesota? Sounds preposterous to say it, but it just looks like the kid might have it in him. What do you think? Um, 
Well, you know, uh, he looks awful good to me. You know, I don't know what he means if he stays. You think he's going to leave? Uh, you know, if he wasn't a Minnesota kid, the way he's playing, the way blue blood schools steal guys from yeah. other teams, yeah. you'd be a little nervous. Let's just say he was a kid from St. Louis or he was from Youngstown, Ohio. <clears throat> you might be a little nervous. I don't think, uh, where is he, from Elko or someplace like that? Esco. Esco, Esco. that's right. I know it's Duluth. Uh, he, Duluth? He, he, he probably... You know, are going to stay now. Um, I think what he's doing right now, uh, I think he could be really. Now we, there's a history of guys that are, pre, you know, you know, pretty good. I mean, don't forget the uh, um, uh, Tyrone Carter. He won the Thorpe Award. Yeah, he was I mean, the best, good. Yeah. the best defensive back in the country. And let me just tell you something. If you do that for Minnesota, you're really mm -hmm. good. I mean, you catch the attention, right? You know, by everybody, and you know the Winfield kid. Uh, had a great career, and he's he he's even playing better, in, you know, in pro football. Uh, but this guy is, you know, really, you know, really good, and he he plays that center field good. If they put the ball up for grabs, he's going to get it. Uh, Gophers, as Craig from Boston, Massachusetts writes, are favored over the Illini, even though the Illini are still in the top twenty-five. So, how do we explain that? Is it simply are the Illini that decimated by injury? What what explains the fact that you got a team still in the top twenty five as badly as they got beat last week? Gophers are not ranked. Gophers are on the road, and apparently Gophers are favored. Well, I don't know who all votes on the ranking, but I know who sets the betting line, and those guys are a lot smarter. They tend to be. It's a lot smarter uh, than the guys that that are ranking. I, I I can tell you that because a lot of people are ranking. They don't even see the teams play. They know who won or lost, and, and they go from there. But, you know, uh, it was always my understanding, I'm not a better, I'm not, that, you know, the guys that set the line, they try to do it so you have just as much money bet on one team as the other team, and they're going to make 10% they can't lose. And that's why the line, you know, changes. Uh, but so the only thing I would tell you um, is that uh, – Maybe not enough, enough money's being bet on Illinois. Right. Would that be it? And everybody's jumping on the bag, bandwagon with uh, the golfers and a lot of money's being, you know, put there. But I, I don't. the only thing I used to do, I used to watch the betting lines when I coached only to see if it moved a lot. Pertaining because, to injuries, maybe? Well, I used to, you know, if it moves a point, that's a lot. If it moves yeah, two points, right. I used to think, ah, there's a quarterback problem here. Right. Or some guy you didn't think was going to play and the other team's now going to play. No. Um, Bielema has never lost to the Gophers, right, Garzi? And is it Correct. so? So we're talking about injuries. That's the are they decimated at some key spots? Uh, they're not decimated. They have some. Okay, they have some. He's I, a fan favorite, by the way, with the with the Gophers, Bielema. <laughs> yes, he is. Ever yes, since the, no question, the, we love the, the guy. The two the point score. chart. Yeah, on this show, we love him. Yeah. We love uh, Bielema. For I know sure. Brett Bielema since he was an assistant uh, at uh, Iowa. Is that yeah. that far back? Huh? And, you know, uh, he, he's really a good defensive coach. And uh, uh, when I knew him to now, he's he's gained a few pounds. Well, that the, happens, yeah. yeah Head true. coaching money, man. And, you know, it, we, a little, I, I think he has, I'm almost positive, he has a Hawkeye tattoo on his leg. Iowa Hawkeye tattoo? Yeah. yeah that's where he played. Yeah, yeah I guess that was, makes some sense. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he's from uh, someplace in Illinois. His, uh, his dad was a pig farmer. Like, Profitville or Profit, okay. something yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah, he's done a good job there. They yeah. got, who was it they like? They, they get killed by Oregon, Oregon. last week, right? Yeah, yeah. And Oregon's pretty good. Yeah, but they um, beat Michigan. They did. Uh, that's, that's true. Yeah. Um, my Hoosiers are at Michigan State. Are they going to stub their toes, or do you think they can keep this dream alive? I sure hope they can keep it alive. You know, I've watched uh, Indiana. That is a well coached football team. How do you oh, what makes you say that? I just watch, you know, but it, I would say what do you I, pay I, attention okay. to? I watch what they're trying to do, mm -hmm. the techniques people use, how they line up, are are they self-destructing, you know? Do they have delay of game penalties? Do they have motion penalties? And I would I've judged that over the years even it doesn't matter if a team's winning or losing. Uh you've heard me say this before. Uh I remember when Denny Green was at uh Northwestern, Northwestern and yeah. had no talent. And I was at Ohio State. We got a lot of time. I remember watching one time, and I said, boys, uh, I hope this guy never gets a lot of talent because mm -hmm. he knows how to line them up and he knows how to coach them. And 
Uh, one of my pet peeves now, Dan, when I listen to these announcers out there, these national announcers, they want to keep singing the praises of guys like uh, Ryan De- Oh, great play call. Oh, Lincoln Riley. No one can call plays like that guy. James Frank, so on and so forth. They're missing the boat. The truly great jobs that are getting done coaching right now, a couple, Indiana. I don't care where he brought 13 guys from JMU. JMU. They're not the same as right. they have at Ohio State and some of those other places. The guy continues to do a great job at Iowa State, Matt Campbell. Yeah, that's a good point. That's um, another one. The guy uh, was a Steve Elko at Texas A&M. He's gone in there, lost the first game, and has really got him going. How about uh, Clark Lee at Vanderbilt? He almost beat Texas. What I'm saying is these guys are taking less as far as talent and doing a lot more. Well, what's interesting about your bio is you sort of have seen both worlds, right? You grew up in the blue blood world of Ohio State, and then you coached at places that are not blue blood at all. So you've sort of seen it, like I said, from both extremes, correct? You you got that right. I I can, when I, in reality, uh, when I was at, Ohio State, when you showed up in August, if you didn't do anything, if you went playing golf or fishing the rest of the year, probably going to win eight games. You know? <laughs> if it, it, you know, And then and then depending on what kind of job. But That's realistically, when you looked on there, you're going to be yeah. a decided uh, favorite in every game. Yeah. There was only a couple games that you had to really worry about. You know, when I was there with Coach Hayes, the first meeting every year, He'd circle three teams, and we only played nine games back then. Right, first right. And he red letter three games. He said, "These are the ones we have to worry about. The other ones we got, we'll, we'll handle them pretty good." So the whole focus was there. And then uh, when I was there, um, unless you were playing a team that was a threat, it's or even early in the year, you'd spend one or two days practicing for Michigan. You know, everybody knew it, and uh, just the way it was. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because, like I said, people at the Blue Blood schools don't like to hear this. And and because you come from that, you can do it because you ha- you have indeed seen the other side as well. They don't like those reminders, right? They, I, don't, I bet you you're not popular reminding people of all the built-in advantages that the Ohio States and historically well, the Michigans of the world you know, have. The, the, the one problem, people ask me again, they say, what would you do differently, you know, uh, coaching some of the places you've been? I said, well, I'll tell you. I always think there's two ways you can communicate. You can tell people what they want to hear. Right. Or you can tell people what they need to hear. And I was always kind of a need-to-hear guy. You know, I was honest, but need-to-hear. If I had to do it again, I'd probably soften that a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I, I, I always go back, you know, um, and I'm not picking on him. But my good friend Jerry Kill, you know, I mean, everybody loved Jerry, right? I remember, I can still hear Jerry, you know. Minnesota, best place I've ever lived. I'll tell you one thing, Rebecca and I, and uh, we retire. We're gonna, in fact, we're about, you know, we're going to be buried here in Minnesota. Best place I've ever lived. First of all, it's a beautiful sunny day here in, yeah, okay. in the great state you got of Minnesota. It. And uh, so I happened to be in the car that one day when he was on the radio. He was announcing that he was stepping down for whatever reason. All of a sudden... I looked over to my left, and old Jerry and, and Rebecca, they went by me go about 95 miles an hour south. He was gone, you know? And nice in your face. But, but, but everybody, everybody bought that, yeah. you know? And Meanwhile, here you still are. I'm still here. You're still here. How many years has it been since you coached? Ooh, I, you? This is my 18th year at a coach, Almost and I coached 10. So 20. I've lived here 28 years. Are you nuts? Yeah. Do you have any announcements to make? Like what? Like maybe moving south? No, year round? No, that's a you, no. You know the thing about it. I've lived here obviously longer than I ever lived any place. Yeah, me too. And uh, uh, I've got a, I got some friends here. I got a lot of acquaintances here. Well, you got family my, too. My two kids live here. Right. My grandkids live here. No, how do you, you know? I mean, that's that, that's my life now. And uh, I don't. I don't mind. I embrace the winter. I don't mind. In fact, I no, like you do. The, you do. I like what I don't like is the is spring. I oh, got. Spring. I got yeah. to get out of here in the spring. Yeah. That, well, that makes sense. And you have the uh, yeah, now. You have the uh, ability to do that. Are you still flying 
you got that big flagpole, University of uh, uh, Wisconsin Badger flag. You still flying that Wisconsin Badger flag? No. Oh. I fly the American flag. That's it. Nothing yeah. underneath it, like Golden Gopher flag. I, no, no, I fly the, the American US flag. flag. Okay, good for you. And I had a stepdaughter that was going to Wisconsin when that would happen. That was controversial. Remember that? You well, got all yeah, kinds of you, me. You're telling everybody you go over I, there. Do you think people, I fan the flames? People, people, oh, <laughs> people are going to rip it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a big rival. Well. Was Bielema coaching then? I can't no, remember. no, no, Barry Alvarez. Was, was, yeah, that was Barry Alvarez. That's yeah. true. That's oh, Bielema was when I got fired. Yeah, he was in here. Then. Was he already in there? Yeah, one year. So, what's the Bielema record guards he against uh, Minnesota? Either nine and zero or ten and zero. I can't remember. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah. yeah. And Could, last year, remember they they well, lost to a third string quarterback in the fourth quarter. They had a fourth and thirteen and hit the pit touchdown. Oh, that's yeah, right. That was yeah, a bad one. I was one. at the yeah, game. Was, you were at that game. That's right. Yeah. That was your Board of Regents game, right? Yeah. No, that, when, when, I was sitting in the stands for that one. Okay. And uh, because. Uh, that was some, a tough one. Yeah, some guy in front of me turned around and gave me a dirty look. Why like he gave me a dirty fault? look? Yeah, I don't know. have anything to do with it. I don't know. But yeah. Brett Blake, probably because I was at the game. Well, it's a pretty know. pivotal game for the locals because they've won three in a row. They had, they've had they kind of recovered from that early part where you go, hmm, I don't know about where this season's going. The game has got to stick with it. I mean, oh, damn. Is the Northwestern yeah. game? I mean, the uh, North, North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah. Should have won that game. That's North true. Carolina not very good. The kicker's good, and he missed two field goals. One was a chip shot. Yeah. Brosmer, we have to we have to give him his, his props. Man. Yeah, he has thrown well. You know, one thing I noticed right away from him, he's throwing. He's got a quick release. Yes, he really does. And the thing about it, so the key factor, I keep saying, well, you got to look if they give him time to throw the protect. Yes. He can be effective because he he makes good decisions. He, he would does. Been, he, he'd be really great at New Hampshire. <laughs> well, and of course, the the hard part is he's got. Yeah, I don't. I, I asked Gargi this: if like if he got hurt, God forbid, could he end up petitioning for another year? Because as it is now, he's just it's a one year deal, and you got to move on to the next guy. But uh, he I thinks think it's too late for that. Too many yeah. games. Yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate. I don't. I, mean, know, I don't know though because you see some guys they say he's in his seventh year. Yeah. He's in his. It's well, crazy. the Indiana QB, I think, is in year seven. I think it was at Ohio. Was he at Ohio, Kent State or Ohio? I think it was Ohio U, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it was I Kent think State. this is year seven. How about my old him? school Kent State? What they do? Uh, they're having a tough time. Tough time. They're, they're listed as the worst program Ooh. in the country. And, you know, here's my other thing. You know, um, I was fortunate of winning record there. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, but if you look over the course, the long course of time, I think there's only two guys that have. Really want to can say it was myself and and Don Chan, but after a while, every three years you fire the coach, fire the coach, fire the coach. Sooner or later, you got to think maybe it's not the maybe coach. Maybe it's not the coach. Yeah. Let's let's look at what's you know going yeah. on here. Yeah, it's unfortunate and it's uh, it's tough. It's good to have you back. Good hour, a very productive hour. We got some good stories that we've not heard before. And uh, we did learned. You, I love the poster story. Did you, this is the best. Did, did you Did this you is, like my Rolls Royce you, video? You, you did huh? uh, send us uh, Garzy yeah. and me a Rolls Royce video. This is when you were still in Naples, yeah. Florida, land of opportunity. Land there, of opportunity. As I understand it, you're a little mysterious about who owns it, but it sounds like one of the um, attractive elderly women that you no, run into no, down no, in Florida. No. Might happens have to be a wife of a good friend of mine. Oh, okay. So let's just, stop, let's just stop that uh, right there. Well, that's not quite a sexy that's story. That's what I saw in the video. stop right yeah. there. Okay. No. That's what I just wanted to clarify. No. That's for but sure. But I can tell you something. Yeah. If she let me use that car down in Naples <laughs> going around town, I'd have some real stories. You, you would have some stories. <laughs> in your face. Welcome back to the Tundra. We'll chat next week. Thank you. Glenn Mason brought to you by, as always, our good friends at Cary Limo. Top five at five, I'm assuming, will include confirmation that the Vikings have a new option That's at it. left tackle. We have not talked about it yet today. We will give you the details on the new left tackle, TJ Hawkinson's practice availability, and will Blake Cashman ever play again?